As some of you may know, I'm in the process of, of authoring my book. And in the process of doing this, I'm reading an abundance of literature. And in the industry, there's oftentimes this, this term that we use. They say, I'm, a, I'm an evidence-based dentist. And I'd like to bring to your attention that that could actually be detrimental to your practice. And let me explain to you why. Uh, just recently, I was at a conference and we had a, a world-renowned oral surgeon up on stage and they were talking. And they were presenting some data on implant, uh, peri-implantitis around implants on full arch cases. And they said, here's a, here's a long-term study that was done over five years. It was a reputable study. It had over 3,000 patients involved, and it was published in, in 2015, so not too long ago. So you say, okay, this is good. And then they said the incidence of periimplantitis was this, and it was rather a high number. It was, and, it, and it was shockingly high to me because I don't have a lot of, uh, if any, periimplantitis, especially in my full mouth cases. And so I was kind of shocked at the data, and then I, I sat back and I realized what was happening. So let's back into this. The paper published in 2015 which means it had to have been submitted to the publishing house about a year prior. So we're talking 2014. So it means the paper had to have been written in 2013. And it was a five-year study, which puts us in 2008 as the earliest time that they would have started it. But they would have started it slightly before that because they had to collect all the data. So we're talking about a, a, a start point of 2007. So 2007... I, I don't know if you can even remember 2007. Some of you that are watching this video are like, I had spots on my face in 2007, right? I mean, that was a long time ago. We're not even doing things this year in dental implantology that we did last year, much less how we did it in 2007. Think about the implants that were available to us as an industry in 2007. We, had, we, we still had external hacks, we still had polished collars. We still had machine implants. We, we had square threads. We had some things that just don't even exist in the marketplace anymore. And that was what we were working with. So if your implant design, just, just if you just take the implant itself and you say the implants don't look anything like that anymore because they work better today, then when you're up on stage saying that this is the incidence of periimplantitis in 2024 and you carry the reputation of a world-renowned oral surgeon, well, you've got to be careful because what you're telling people is that the literature base is telling you this. And, well, it was that. Clearly, it was that. But what is it today? Now, here's the risk. We don't know what it is today. You don't know how good you are today because you need, say, five years of data to collect. So we really don't know where we're at today based on literature that's nearly 20 years old. And I find that to be the case quite often. I've had people say to me, the literature says that guided and non-guided are equivalent in terms of implant success. And I say, okay, where are the papers for that? And they go, here's one from 2002. And I go, 2002? You're, you're reciting a paper from 2002? Uh, fully guided systems didn't come out until about a decade ago. So we're talking like 2012, 2013, where you had fully guided systems, type four systems, where the implants went through the guides. And they didn't come out prior to that because we didn't have the digital technology to allow us. So if you used a guide in 2002, it was a suck down over a denture tooth on a drill press in the back lab. Well, that's considerably different than what we're doing today. Today, we're doing a prosthodontic-driven protocol, starting with the end in mind, backing into the ideal implant location, verifying that you have the appropriate amounts of bone and soft tissue, placing the implant with a type 4 fully guided system within 200 microns of that desired position. Well, clearly, the, the data from 22 years ago is not going to be comparable today. So when people say, I'm an evidence-based dentist, you need to be careful about how you approach that because you might be buying into uh, beliefs that are no longer true. In fact, I like to say uh, the evidence used to say the planet was flat until one day they realized that it's not flat. Okay, so it, it, it's true until someone proves it not true. So we've we talked about photogrammetry. On the, on, the ch on the channel, and we say, well, people feel like you have to have photogrammetry, and I don't feel that way. 
And so is it true in the literature that photogrammetry is necessary? Yes, that's what the literature would tell you. But that's not what the clinical, the clinical experiences we're having don't confirm that. So it's true until someone proves it not true. So just be careful as you go about your everyday business and you say, well, I'm, a, I'm an evidence-based dentist. Just make sure that you know that the evidence can sometimes be misleading. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.